This video is part one of what will be a many-part guide on how to modify an appliance to be IoT enabled. You can follow along with the written guide that is linked in the description of the video. By the end of this series, I'll have converted a simple appliance that must be manually controlled through button presses into an appliance that can be additionally controlled autonomously through external sensor data or manually through the user's smartphone. In this part of the guide, I will cover the process of opening up the appliance, locating the needed nodes, connecting it to a node MCU, and writing a simple program to control the appliance. The appliance I'll be modifying is a simple small space heater, but my intention is for this knowledge to be applicable to any appliance with simple button inputs. If you follow along and get stuck, I encourage you to visit the Micronote Community Discord server to seek help. There is a link to the server in the description of the video. Before moving forward, I want to provide a safety warning. Disassembling an appliance can potentially expose connections to residential mains voltage, which can range from 110 volts to 240 volts across the globe. When you disassemble an electronic device, make sure to be safe by ensuring the device is unplugged and powered off. Also be wary of high voltage capacitors, which can hold a charge even after device is no longer powered. Let the device remain unpowered for at least a day before disassembly, and test capacitors as you come across them. The last hazard to be aware of is hazardous materials. Some devices, especially if they are older, may contain materials that are harmful on contact or inhalation. One such material is beryllium oxide, which is used in magnetrons from microwaves. My general rule for safety is to know what to expect on the inside of your device before opening it. Do some research on the device if you are unsure, and if you do come across something that looks unfamiliar, pause working on the device until you know what it is. All this being said, do not fear opening up electronics. Observing how existing devices function is a valuable experience for electronics enthusiasts. Now I'm going to begin taking apart my space heater. Before removing any fasteners, I'm going to make sure it is unplugged from power. The outer enclosure of the heater is held together with four screws. I remove them and place them on a magnetic pad. Magnetic trays and pads are great for tasks like this to make sure small fasteners don't get lost. Now I can remove the back from the heater. The circuit board with the buttons that I need access to for this mod is pressed against the top of the heater behind the fan and heating element, so I unscrewed and removed these as well. Now the screws fastening the circuit board to the enclosure are accessible, so I removed them and removed the board. At this point the circuit board can be modified, but to make the process simpler, I unplugged the wires connecting the board to the other components of the heater. I made sure to take pictures with my phone's camera so that I would know exactly where the wires need to go when I reassemble it. Now all of the rest of the heater can be put off to the side while I analyze and modify the circuit board. When assembled, my heater has four buttons on its top panel, an on-off power button, and warm, hot, and fan buttons. These buttons on the enclosure press the aligned surface-mounted button on the circuit board. My goal is to use a microcontroller to programmatically connect the two nodes on either side of each individual button, bypassing the need to physically press it. To better understand the circuit, I continuity tested nodes on the board and found that one side of each button was connected to ground. Ground on my heater's PCB was conveniently labeled for me, but if you aren't as lucky with your appliance, try looking up a number on one of its ICs and use its datasheet to locate ground. Once ground was located, I soldered a wire to the node that was long enough to be used outside the enclosure. For this, I used 26 gauge stranded wire. I also soldered a wire to the 5 volt node, but I have not ended up using it as of yet. It's better to solder a wire to a node if you think there's even a small chance that you'll use it, than to have to open up the appliance more than once. Then, for each of the four buttons, I soldered one wire to the node on the side of the button opposite ground. Three of my buttons had convenient pads I could solder to, but the on-off power button did not, so I soldered the wire directly to the button's leg. I only had red wire when doing this, but I recommend using different colored wires. I differentiated mine by marking them with a permanent marker. Here's an image of the circuit board after soldering all of the wires. From left to right, I soldered a wire to node SW1, the on-off button, SW2, the warm button, SW3, the hot button, SW4, the fan button, and ground. I also soldered a wire to the unregulated voltage, but like the 5 volt wire, I have not needed it yet. Before reassembling the heater, I drilled a hole in the side of the enclosure near the edge of where the circuit board belongs. This way the wires can exit the appliance through this hole. I routed the wires through the hole, and then continued to assemble the rest of the heater. 
I referenced the pictures I took during disassembly to make sure everything was in its proper place. Now that the appliance was completely reassembled, it was again safe to plug in. I plugged in my heater and first tested the buttons as normal to make sure that they were working the same as before disassembly. Then I tested bypassing each of the buttons by shorting each of the button's wires to ground. Once the wires are verified to work as intended, the appliance is ready to be connected to a microcontroller. One more thing before moving on, I soldered JSD connectors to the four button wires and the ground wire. This will make them much easier to work with in the future. To summarize what's going on so far, I've soldered wires to both sides of each of the buttons, totaling five wires, one for common ground and one for the node of each of the buttons opposite ground. Connecting each of the button's wires to ground performs its function just like pressing the button would. However, having access to these nodes will allow me to use a microcontroller and a program to automatically perform the button actions. Which brings us to the question, how exactly could we connect these wires to a microcontroller? In other words, how can I convert an output signal from my microcontroller into a connection between one of the button wires and ground? This is a perfect job for a transistor, more specifically, an NPN bipolar junction transistor. You can think of this transistor as functioning as a switch, but instead of needing to be activated manually, it is activated by an electrical signal. I'll link a video that explains transistors in more detail, but for this application, all you need to know is that when a signal is provided to the base of the transistor, current is able to flow from the collector to the emitter, completing the same circuit as manually pressing the button on the appliance. I also put a resistor in series with the microcontroller pin to protect the microcontroller from excess current. This same circuit can be used for all of the button wires to create transistor switches, so that all functions of the appliance can be controlled using microcontroller pins. Now I will connect my heater to a microcontroller using the four attached button wires and one ground wire from the heater, and four NPN transistors and four resistors. I'm using an ESP8266 NodeMCU microcontroller, but you should be able to follow along just fine with an ESP32. First, I put in place the four NPN transistors. For my mod, I'm using 2N2222 transistors. Next, I connected a 200 ohm resistor to the base of each transistor. Then I connected the other end of each resistor to a unique I.O. pin on the microcontroller. Next, I created a ground rail by connecting a ground pin from the microcontroller to one of the rails on the breadboard. I connected the emitter of each transistor to it. Lastly, I connected the ground wire from the heater to the ground rail on the breadboard, and I connected each collector on the transistors to one of the four wires from the heater's buttons. The last thing I'm going to do in this video is write a simple MicroPython program to activate each of the buttons on the heater. First, I plug my heater into power and connect my microcontroller to my computer with a USB cable. Then, I open Thani, set the interpreter to ESP8266, and the port to the port of my device. Then, I wrote a simple program that can be used to activate the pins connected to each of my heater's buttons. First, I imported pin from machine and sleepms from time. Then I defined a pin object for each of my heater's buttons and set them all as outputs. Lastly, I defined a simple function called simulate button press that takes in a pin object as a parameter. This function sets the given pin high, sleeps for a small period of time, and then sets the pin low, just like if a finger pressed the button. Then I save the script to my microcontroller as main.py and press the reset button. Now I can call simulate button press from the MicroPython REPL on any of the pins I define to activate the corresponding function on the heater. First, I can activate the power button, which turns the heater on in warm mode. Next, I can activate the hot button to put my heater in hot mode. I activate the fan button so my heater only has the fan on without the heat. And I activate the warm button to put my heater back in warm mode again. Then I can turn the heater off by activating the power button again. This is where I'm going to end the first part of this guide. You may see where I'm going with this mod. I now have access to this appliance through an IoT microcontroller, which opens up endless possibilities for what can be done with it. I intend to explore some of these possibilities in future guides. If you are using this guide as a reference with your own appliance and need some help, feel free to ask in the Micronote Community Discord server. This concludes this guide. 
If you want to check out more of our guides, head on over to micronote.tech. If you want to support the creation of more guides and kits, you can follow us on Twitter or subscribe to this YouTube channel. Or you can buy a kit from our Etsy store. Any support is greatly appreciated. Lastly, we want to start building Micronote into a learning community in a couple of ways. First, if you have any questions or discussion ideas, you can post them in the community Discord. Second, we want to start adding community content to our website. If you've worked on a project that you think others can learn from, fill out the community submission Google form to be considered for a community post. Links to our social media, Discord server, Etsy store, and community submission form can be found in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.